So let's talk about the expected value of a function of a random variable. So we took some time um, in the prior video to talk about the expected value of a random variable. And in quite often um, the expected value just simply looks like a type of average. Um, so let's go back and take a look at this. Um, remember that when we looked at expected values initially, I'm going to go back a bit, um, we started with this example where I gave you a list of numbers. And in this list of numbers, um, I the 3, 3, 4, 4, 4, etc. If you were to sum those up, we could uh, we would see that the sum is 49. So, so that sum of 49 divided by the total count of the number of numbers gave us a true average. Right? So that 3 and that 3 and the 4, 4, 4, um, those may have been average scores on the population of quiz scores, so that the average score might have been 4.9. Um, so it, truly it's an average. And then I took that and I looked at the next step and I said, well, what if I simply just counted the two threes, the three fours, the one five, the two sixes, and the two sevens, right? The two, three, one, two, two. Um, I could take my two, my three, my one, my two, two, um, and I could use that information, um, right, the frequency of each one of those numbers, I could just use that as a, as a multiplier, so, and then use that multiplier to determine what the average was, and so I did that, I had two threes, three fours, and so forth. And I set it up this way, so it's really not that much unlike what we saw before. And then notice that two occurred um, two tenths of the time. Um, the four occurred three tenths of the time, and so forth, right? With the seven occurring two out of the ten times. Um, and so that pattern can be seen here. The three occurred two tenths out of the time, the four, three tenths, and so forth. So just by multiplying each one of the numbers um, in that set by their frequency um, allowed us to get the average. Um, and that frequency also corresponds to the probability of that number occur occurring. So if we were to put these numbers here into a bag, right, write them all on pieces of paper and put them into a bag, there's a two-tenths chance of getting a three, a three-tenths chance of drawing a four, and so forth. Um, so these are the probabilities associated with each one of those numbers. Um, and so we can use that idea uh, a couple of different ways. We can just simply multiply each variable times its frequency and come up with a mean, an arithmetic mean. Um, and if these are, um, you know, regardless of if these are known numbers or if these are random variables, as long as we know the frequency that each one occurs, we can think about it in terms of probability as well. So the exp so the mean is one thing, that's what we did here. But if the three, four, five, six, and seven aren't known, like if they're random variables um, that operate within some range, then we're not getting the mean, we're getting a sort of mean, it's the expected value. It's a type of average. It's the expected value of a random variable. And so the formula for an expected value of a random variable is essentially what we've been calling the mean when working with frequency tables. Um, 
So that's kind of a summary of what we saw previously. Now, we can also get the expected value of a function of a random variable. And it's very similar to the expected value of a random variable. Um, so let's take a moment. Right? If you recall that when we were looking to measure variance um, early in the class, when we were comparing um, maybe folks on a basketball team where there was one team you know that looked like this where they might have had a guy that was eight feet and everyone else certainly shorter um, versus a team where everyone was exactly the same height right whatever that average height is there So let's let's actually look at this one. Early earlier in the semester, um, there was an example where we looked at two different teams. Let's say two different basketball teams. Both have an average height of six feet. Um, and the question I proposed is, which team would you rather um, play against? Um, both of these teams have an average height of six. The first one has almost no variation around the mean, meaning that they're all exactly six, there's no variation. The second one has quite a bit of variation around the mean, and when I say variation, I mean that there's some space between each one of them, their heights, um, and their, um, and the distance that each one of those would have from the mean. So let me kind of go backwards a little bit. Get, make this a little bit more proportional, slightly. So, so this won't be beautiful, but here's a guy. He's 10 feet, and for the group, it looks something like this, where there's a, a mean of 6 feet. So in order for us to figure out how much variation, what we did is we kind of averaged out the airspace between each one of those individuals um, to come up with the mean variation. And so one way that we looked at that is that we just simply um, did something like this where we took each one of those individuals, the 10 minus the mean plus the 5 minus the mean plus the 5 minus the mean plus the 5 minus the mean and so forth where the mean in this case was 6 and so what we have is the distance that each one of them each one of the five individuals would have and we get an average of those um, and if you did the work on this where you took your 4 your absolute value of a negative 1 makes that a positive 1, 1, 1. You'd end up with an 8 over 5, um, or 1.6 feet. So you would expect each of one of those individuals to be within 1.6 feet on average from the mean. But that's how much variation there is. If the mean is 6, you may have guys that are 7 foot 6, or you may have guys that are 6 feet minus that. Um, you know, closer to four feet. Um, and we call it that the mean absolute deviation. And so that one gave us a very um, intuitive, it, the intent was to, for us to get an intuitive feel for um, deviation and variance. Um, so that is one useful example of variance. But more realistically, um, the variance that we use in the real world instead of taking the absolute value to make those differences positive, we would use um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 
5. We would square those differences to get them positive. And, um, and so we'd have our 10, our 5, our 5, our 5, our 5, just to make this a quick sketch, divided by 5. Um, and so you could come up with something that's very similar to this. And if we took the square root of that, um, we'd get kind of an average of the differences from the mean. So skipping ahead, you could come up with a measure of um, 20 divided by 5 or 4. And the units um, for the mean absolute deviation were feet, and the units for this one, since each one of those would be was feet, we'd say that's feet squared. If we take the square root of that variance, um, if we take the, if we square, take the square roots, let's get rid of that. This was a mistake. That should just be variance. If we take the square root of the variance, that's actually the standard deviation. Um, and so what we get is, two feet. Not that much different than the nearly two feet here, but the variance, or the, uh, the square root of the variance, or the standard deviation, right? How much variation around the mean should you expect? You could expect roughly about two feet on average for that type of variation around the mean. So that's how we define variance. Um, and so this method works, but what if this is a random variable here? Right, then we might want to look at this a little bit differently. So let's see if we can use these ideas. Let's go back to where we started. And what I want to do is find the variance around this using a frequency table and using the direct way. So in order for us to get the variance, we're going to have to figure out what the average is, the mean, which we know to be 4.9, and then subtract each one of those values from, um, or subtract 4.9 from each one of those values. So let's um, skip ahead and, and show what that would look like. So since I had two threes, Instead of writing 3 minus 4.9 squared plus 3 minus 4.9 squared, I'm going to just say that I'll, I've done that twice by writing 2 here. And since I had 3 fours, instead of writing this whole thing three different times, I'll just say that I had three of those um, with that variation. And I think there was just one of those, two of those, and Two, um, there were two sevens. So two sevens, two sixes, one five, three fours, two threes. And so the average squared difference from the mean, well, if I want to get that average, I'm going to have to divide it by the total number of variables, and there were 10. So that's going to give me a variance for those. And if I um, did the math here, you should see that you come up with a value that says that the variance is um, about 2.1. Maybe if you plugged it in, it might be 2.09. You can also plug this into your calculator, 1 var stats, um, and you should get that same um, value for variance. So if you were to take our list of values to 3, 3, 4, 4, 4, 5, 6, 6, and so forth, and if you wanted to look at those to determine what the um, variance is and the standard deviation, we would go into stats, calculate one of our stats, and work with list 1, which is already in there. And what you'd find 
is that it would tell us that the um, standard deviation, if that's the population of values, is 1.446. 1.446. Six is what we're reporting here. So if I take that information and go back, um, if I take the square root of this, the 2.09, it should give me um, the 1.446, or if I take my 1.446 and square it, I should get that value. So let's take a quick look. Um, Let's square the 1.446, 1.446 squared. It's going to give us our 2.09. And that's what we have. So this method works. Um, it's consistent, at least with the calculator's method for determining what the standard deviation is. The standard deviation is in fact um, the square root of that which is 1.446. But notice that as we went through this, um, if we go back to this, what you see is a pattern that we've seen earlier where there's a frequency that two tenths Right, so that difference where you had the 3 minus the 4.9 um, came up two tenths of the time. And also the other difference, the second one, came up three tenths of the time. And that was that difference there. And so that pattern continues. Um, so we can generalize this um, to get the expected um, squared difference. That expected squared difference Let's write this. It's going to be, let's rewrite what we see here. It's going to be the summation of each one of those variables minus um, 4.9. And don't forget, we had from what, how many? 10 different ones? So 1 through 10. So from 1 all the way up to 10. And squared. And then it was times the probability or the frequency. Um, and that value itself, when you sum up all of those squared differences um, times their frequency, and or the probability, you ended up with a 2.09. Um, so this was a function of the random, you can look, think about this as being the function of a random variable. Um, and in general, what you'd say is that um, a random variable, if you know what the mean is, um, and you know the probability, right? If you have a probability distribution function for that random variable, you can get the expected value um, of that difference. So the expected value. of that difference squared looks like this. Um, and so this was the function, right? This here was a function of a random variable.
and in general the expected value of any function of a random variable. The expected value of any function of a random variable follows that same format um, where you take that function evaluated at that random variable times the probability um, and sum it up over the various random variables. So we can get variance um, using this idea here. Right? We can get the expected squared difference. So, bringing back up the numbers that we've seen already, the 3 that came up 2 out of 10 times, the 4 that came up 3 out of 10 times, let's see if we can use our calculator to help us do that work. If we want the expected value of these values, the expected value of those values, assuming they're random variables, and we have our probability distribution, um, it's just going to be we um, 3 times 2 tenths plus 4 times 3 tenths plus 5 times 1 tenth 6 times 2 tenths plus 7 times 2 tenths so I'm going to try to do the math here rather quickly um, and it looks like that's going to be a 6 plus a 12 plus a 5 plus a 12 plus a 14 all over 10. And if you add this up, what is that? 24 and 14 gives us 38, plus 11 is a 49 over 10, and we get the average that we've seen in the past, a 4.9. To have our calculator do this work for us, what we could do is say that this is list 1, and then list 2 represents the frequency list. Um, and so if you put in those two lists, and you do your one var stats on those two, list one and then list two. The second one will always be the frequency list. We should also get a 4.9. So we'll take a look at that. So I am going to drop in those numbers and their frequencies. Um, let's see. So we had a three, four, five, six, seven. So three, four, five, six, seven. And then list two should be the frequency at which those occurred. So two tenths, three tenths. So three, two, three, one, two, two. Two, three, one, two, two. Two, three, right? So those are just the numerators that are here. And then, but we actually had those values divided by um, 10. So what I'm going to do is go up to the top of the list, the top of that list, and um, what I'm going to do is say that list 2 now equals list 2 as it is divided by 10, and that's going to allow me to divide each one of those values by 10 all at the same time. So now I have list 1, and then I have the frequency. 3 occurred 2 tenths of the time, 4 occurred 3 tenths. Um, and now if I go into my calculator, do my calc, 1 var stats, and list 1, and then list 2 is now the frequency list. Oops, don't put a 2 there, but you actually say second 2 to indicate a list. And when you do list 1 and list 2, we get a mean of 4.9. And once again, we get a standard deviation of 1.45. So it gives us the correct mean of 4.9 um, by using our calculator. OK, so we've seen that we can use our calculator where we have um, a list of variables and a list of frequency um, 
a, a frequency list, a list of occurrences in terms of probabilities or percentages that those variables occur. So we can use that to get an expected value. So the expected value or the average value on x is going to be a 4.9. We know that the exact average is 4.9, but we're assuming these are random, so we're saying expected. Now, let's finish this up. If we have a third list, list 3, which is a function of x, such as, um, let's say that the function is going to be, um, oh, let's go with a minus 2. f at x equals x minus 2. So that means 3 minus 2 here, which would make, would make that a 1. 4 minus 2, which would make that a 2 a 3, a 4, and a 5. Um, so now if I want to know what the expected value of those are, those values are, right, what's the expected value of that list that's been generated from that function? What I'm going to do is just simply take each one of those values multiply them by their frequency slash probability and I'll get an answer. So it's going to be a 1 times 2 tenths, a 2 times 3 tenths, a 3 times 1 tenth, right? And that's our list 3. If I multiply those, so the expected value of the function of x is going to be um, determined by um, 1 times 2 tenths plus a 2 times a 3 tenths plus a 3 times a 1 tenth plus a 4 times a 2 tenth plus a 5 times a 2 tenths. Um, if I do the math on this quickly, we end up with a 2 plus 4 plus 3 plus 4 plus, oops, plus 8, plus 10, all over 10. And that is 18 and 12 is 30. 32 over 10, it looks like it's 3.2 is the expected value. Um, so if we have a 1, 2, 3, 4, and a 5, where a 1 occurs 2 tenths of the time, a 2 occurs 3 tenths, and so forth, it looks like we end up with a 3.2. We can also use one of our stats to give us the same information. Um, so in this case, the list is list 3, but the frequency is still list 2. So list 3 and list 2. So I'm going to go back and um, create another list. And so I'm going to go over and list three right, right now currently has something. So I'm going to go up to the top of that list, clear it. And this list 3 is this function here. It's just that first list minus 2. So I'll go ahead and go up to the top and do a list wide function. List 3 equals essentially list 1 minus 2. Let's go back and look at this. x minus 2, x minus 2. And if I hit that enter, if I hit enter, you'll see that it does a uh, it subtracts 2 from each one of those values. 7 minus 2 is 5. So now I can, um, now that I have that other, the separate list, list 3, and I have the frequency associated with it, I should be able to determine what the expected value is on that function. So let's give that a go. We'll go in and say stats calc one of our stats and now it's list 3 right that's the result of that function we still have the probabilities we calculate and we're going to get an average of those and it says it's 2.9 um, 
so 2.9. So there is a difference here that we have to account for. So somewhere in here there is a mistake. And I think I see the mistake here. Um, it's in the frequency list, 3 tenths. So this one I think should have been a 3. Um, and so if I try to make that adjustment, hopefully that gives us the correct value. So that becomes a 2. Let's do the math. Okay, so if we take a look at this, I think we can see where the mistake is. 2 and 6 is 8, and 3 is 11, and 8 is 19, and 10 is 29 over 10, or 2.9. Um, so our answer should have been 2.9. And if we look at what the calculator gave us, um, I think we also saw that that was 2.9. So if I get out of this, and look at my previous entry. We had a 2.9. So that's how we get the frequency or the um, the expected value of um, of a function of a random variable. And then next, what we're going to do is um, look at how we can use these ideas to determine the variance, right? The expected variance of a random variable.